You may have seen in the tech news that Nvidia has launched a new 1080 and 1060. Now to clarify, these aren't new cards necessarily, and the only new thing about them is their memory, but some of the add-in partners, like these ASUS cards, have tweaked them just a little bit, so let's take a look. Starting off with the 1080 side of things, this is again the just faster memory clocked version. The core is the same. This one, depending on which model you're comparing it to, whether you compare it to the OC version, this one has a lower clock speed and boost clock by about 100 megahertz, so fairly significant, and if you're comparing it to the standard 1080, which is the one that I bench marked uh, a very long time ago now, then uh, this is a little bit higher clock to buy, I think about 50 megahertz, so still pretty impressive. The main new feature is the new GDDR5X 11 gigabits per second memory, which is quoted on the front of the box, and is really the only differentiating factor between the two, you know, the standard 1080, the 1080 OC, and the 1080 11 gig gigabits per second OC, so a little bit of a complicated naming scheme, but if you see an 11 gigabits per second or an 11G card, then you know what you're looking at. A quick tour around the card shows that this is actually the same cooler that is on the 1080 Ti. They seem to have beefed it up a little bit, which is actually shown in the temperatures as well. Uh, really impressive, I think 58 degrees, 59 degrees maximum. So really impressive there and obviously very quiet. Still has the fan connectors on the back, of course. Still has the same IO on the rear too, including DVI-D, DisplayPort and HDMI. And otherwise a fairly standard card. This one obviously needs an eight pin and a six pin to power it. On the 1060 side, of things you still get the same core same as the 1080 and depending on which model you get because obviously this one isn't the Strix model itself then you will have a slightly different clock speed to match uh, but this one has the 9 gigabits per second standard GDDR5 non-X variant this is still faster than the original I think the original was somewhere around, around 8 uh, so a little bit lower on that respect so obviously higher in this card but depending on as I said which variant you get will depend on what clock speeds uh, and all that sort of stuff which is really one of the main determining factors. This card being the non-Strix model means that it's uh, actually a two fan design, still looks pretty nice, still has a pretty good overall uh, cooling solution, I think was still maxing out around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius, so pretty good there. The rear I.O. is actually the same as the 1080 with two HDMI ports, two display ports and one DVI port. I think that's again mostly for the VR side of things, so quite nice. And this one only needs a single six pin to power it, which is pretty impressive. Since we know that these cards are pretty stylish, I mean, both of them have rather nice backplates, although the 1080 model has the RGB backplate that just looks utterly glorious when all plugged in. But since you know that already, we want to know more about the performance difference, especially the performance difference between the original 1080 with the standard, I believe, 9 gigabits per second memory and the original 1060 with, I believe, 7 gigabits per second memory. So uh, we want to know those differences. I've spent a lot of time redoing these graphs as I did for the CPU review uh, for the uh, you know 1600 and 1400 Ryzen. And CPUs at the start of this week. So again, these are pretty similar to those. So if you've got any feedback on these graphs, I'd really appreciate it in the comments down below as I genuinely spent like 12 hours editing these ones as well as the uh, you know CPU ones as well. So yeah, a lot of work went into it and hopefully you enjoy it. Let's take a look. Feel free to pause any of these graphs at your leisure, but the main thing for me to take away is that there really isn't a massive performance difference here. It's only one gigabit per second per card here. And really the clock speed, especially the core clock, seems to be the main determining factor. You will notice that some of the results I have are actually a little bit uh, strange, especially for the 1080, mostly because I had some issues with Windows where I had to reinstall multiple times, and of course also uh, because the 1060 and 1080 original cards, those results are actually a little bit old, so some driver improvements, especially on GTA and Doom, will likely come into that uh, quite a lot there. Now stuff like GTA does seem to benefit with the better memory on both cards here, as you can see, and Doom it seems to also be a pretty good one for the memory speed of course at the higher resolutions you're likely to see a little bit more benefit with uh, the faster memory rather than on the lower speeds but uh, yeah still pretty interesting obviously these cards are fairly comparable anyway uh, especially to their peers obviously and uh, overall if you're after a pretty good graphics card find the one with the highest core clock speed would be my main recommendation so as you've seen it seems like the core clock speed seems to be a little bit more important than the memory clock speed 
speed when it comes to gaming benchmarks. When it comes to the synthetic results, it's generally a little bit balanced, at least in the 3D Mark kind of things, although I think the uh, 1060 was a little bit slower than the original 1060, if I remember rightly. Uh, but I believe both cards, the, the original 1060 and the original 1080 that are reviewed uh, about a year ago now, I think, actually, those cards have a little bit higher clock speeds than these do. Uh, even though this is actually the 1080 is the OC mode, as was the original one, uh, the clock speed is a little bit lower, I think 50 to 100 megahertz lower on this card than it was on the uh, original 1080 OC model. So just bear that one in mind uh, if you are looking to pick one up and especially uh, just have a look at some other reviews of these newer cards as well to see the differences in some other applications that I don't have numbers for. So uh, that is uh, kind of my advice is that there's no real massive difference here. Of course, some games do benefit, benefit from it slightly, but in the grand scheme of things, just buying the higher clock speed card is probably the way to go. Since these cards are basically the same as the original 1080 and 1060 that are viewed uh, sort of a long time ago in tech terms anyway, I don't think it's really right to give them a proper review since not much has changed, but I will still recommend both of them quite highly. They are still fantastic cards, and especially if you can't quite afford a 1080 Ti, the uh, new 1080 or the older OC model is still a fantastic way to go, and of course same for the 1060 as well. If you want to know any more information about these cards or the price when and where you watch them, feel free to take a look at the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below. If you want to support me and keep me spending 12 hours a day remaking graphs for your viewing and infotainment pleasures, then feel free to take a look at the uh, general Overclockers and Amazon affiliate links down there too, as well as the merch link. Uh, there's uh, sort of tech TechTimDB stuff there and just some generally funny uh, tech kind of jokes, so feel free to take a look at that. I'd also really appreciate it if you could share the video, hit subscribe and like the video. And as I said, if you've got any feedback on the graphs or just really any questions about the cards themselves, then feel free to hit me up in the comments down below and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, I guess that's kind of it really. I'll leave some other videos over here for you to take a look at, especially some other graphics card reviews. And of course, the subscribe button over this side. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below and the new cards. And we'll see you all in the next video.